Right then guys, how's it going and welcome back to Toon Tuesdays, your weekly roundup of Newcastle United news now. The Premier League got up and running again at the weekend, was out on Friday night enjoying the Liverpool-Norwich game. Uh, Saturday, spent the whole day checking my fantasy team, looking at the scores coming through, a couple of mini accumulators. Sunday came round and it wasn't quite as fun uh, for us Newcastle fans. Anyway, uh, and I will get on to the Arsenal game, but what I will say is that once the season starts, I do start to wind down a little bit with the Toon Tuesdays videos, just because there isn't any transfers, there's not as much news, uh, and it's mainly kind of match reviews, um, but what I'll do is I will continue doing them, so if you are enjoying Toon Tuesdays, be sure to drop a like. Um, and if you guys are enjoying them, I'll keep doing them, but there won't it'd be as much to talk about each week. Compared to my 17 minute video last week, apparently I had loads to talk about. I really don't think the video will be as long this week, but what I'll start with, and it feels like an, an eternity ago already, was deadline day, Thursday last week, when we brought in Andy Carroll. Um, and I had literally spoken about him a couple of days beforehand, um, or a week beforehand, um, of what I thought of it. Um, and I'll be completely honest, just for com for pure nostalgia, um, I was pretty buzzing to see Andy Carroll back. And I, I think a lot of fans were. Um, don't get me wrong, there's negatives and positives that come with it. The negatives are, I mean, he's all, he's match he's not match fit as it stands. So we're still going to have to wait before he can actually get involved. Who's to say when he does come back, he will be able to do what he once did. Um, but... In relative terms, we've got him on a free. He's only signed a year deal. I doubt they've paid him an awful lot to be here. Um, in that respect, having someone like Andy Carroll off the bench, <laughs> I'm hoping, can only be a good thing. But time can only tell. Um, but I'm sure he's going to get a huge round of applause when he comes back onto the pitch at St. James's Park, that's for sure. On Sunday morning, I got up, I went to Tesco, and I had a quick look at some of the newspapers on offer, um, looking at the backs and see what was going on. On the back of one of the newspapers, who did I see? Lee Charnley um, has come out. I can't remember what newspaper it was. I didn't buy it. I read a couple of bits from it. Him basically saying that the spending they've done this summer is only the start. They want to, to, they want to go on and do more. Um, they want the fans to be behind Steve Bruce, um, etc. Uh, and then, um, well, what, one thing I'll say about that is, surprisingly coincidental that there is a boycott at the Arsenal game that afternoon, and Lee Charnley's in a newspaper that morning asking uh, for the fans to support the team, uh, telling the fans they're going to spend more money. You know, it, the timing is almost perfect in that respect, Okay. Then, and I've had to actually go and double check this because I, could, oh, well, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe it, to be honest. And I've not seen it uh, myself, I've only read about it online. Is that in the match day programme at the Newcastle Arsenal game, Lee Charlie was in that as well. Um, and in that, he said, well, he's, he's talking about Rafa Benitez again. Um, and to be honest, I do not understand this move from Lee Charnley or the club at all because I actually think, as Newcastle fans or myself personally, Rafa's gone now. You know, um, Steve Bruce has come in. We'll talk about the game in a moment. But in terms of Rafa, it was a great while he was here. I'm gutted that he left. But I think people have kind of taken a few steps past that now. So the fact that Lee Charnley is bringing this back up is weird. He said. Um, what did he say? He basically he said that uh, Rafa had basically moved for the money. He said that um, himself and Mike Ashley and Newcastle went beyond um, reason, uh, beyond reason, reasonability, reasonable to keep him at the club. Does that make sense? Probably not. Um, and he also said uh, he said what we have in Steve is someone who cares. What we have in Steve Bruce is someone who's, who cares. As if to say, Rafa Benitez doesn't. Um, 
He's putting it in the program for the fans to get on his side. Like, I just don't get it. Like, how does that make any... It doesn't make any sense to me. As I say, if anything, it's got my back up more because Rafa Benitez hasn't been discussed. The team is is on a new path. Steve Bruce has just started. Like, anyway. Rafa Benitez has come out and he's had his say back um, regarding the Lee Charnley comments. Rafa Benitez has said um, that he didn't want to say anything. Um, he's been positive about Steve Bruce. You know, and even Rafa gets it. it, it he's not there anymore. You know, he's, he's fighting a losing argument because he's not even at the club. Like, he, he doesn't have to respond. But I think at this point, um, like, uh, Mike Ashley and Lee Charnley are just going for the bloke. He's going to have to say something eventually. Um... He said that he stayed in the championship um, with the club when we went down and that if he had was going to leave for money, he would have done it a long time ago. He's had multiple offers from other clubs that he could have left for um, a lot sooner. And yeah, I think that's 100% possible, to be honest, especially when we went down to the championship um, and he decided to stay on. I'm sure there was offers on the table, and then when he got us back up into the prem, etc., um, he said that he was offered the contract that he was offered before he left was with the same pay, but with less control over transfers, which is why he obviously didn't accept it. Um, so you've got both sides. I mean, I suppose at the end of the day. I know who I believe, you know who you believe, it's probably the same person. But in terms of actually having it written down, like if someone could just post the contract online so we could all read it and we can just find out. Um, but at the same time, I don't know why. <laughs> why is this still going on? Why is Lee Charlie talking about this in the match day programme? I don't understand. I understand what he's tried to do, which is let's change the minds of the fans. Let's do a, a newspaper the morning before a boycott. Who knows? Who knows? But yeah, yeah. as I say, I think many fans have taken a few steps past the Rafa Benitez, Benitez situation. It's nice for Rafa to come out and have his say on the matter, but at the same time, no, Lee Charlie isn't going to look good from it. Why is he digging Rafa out? People like Rafa. Um, but yeah, if you have not seen about that, then have a look. But honestly, I don't know why it's happening. Moving on to the game itself. Um, obviously, the boycott was on, uh, many protests, the fact that it was absolutely lashing it down with rain that day was never going to be a big help um, to get numbers outside the ground with the banners and ev with everything else. Um, and obviously, a lot of people went to the match. So, in terms of a boycott, of keeping people away from the game, didn't work. However... What I will say is that the threat or warning of a boycott, I would say, did work. Um, and I think I was watching Newcastle fans TV. They talked about this a little bit in their video. And I do actually agree. They mentioned about the fact that we have gone out and spent money this summer. And I know um, it's not enough. We needed to do more. Uh, the Perez sale, the TV money. But... In comparison to previous windows, we have gone out and spent. And I do think a lot of that is down to the pressure the fans have put on. Going back to what I said about Blumen Lee Charnley, releasing a newspaper article the morning before the boycott, I think that is his way of trying to get fans on side before the game. You know, they've, if there was no boycott, I, do not, I don't see that happening. I think putting himself in the match day program to try and big himself up, which I think was a, an awful move. But what he's done is he's he's because of the threat of the boycott, they've had to do things to try and get fans on side. And although none of it was fantastic, uh, we did spend more money this summer than I thought we would. Um, in terms of getting people into the ground or keeping people away from the ground, I don't think it worked. But in terms of getting a reaction from the um, 
the owners and Lee Charlie, I think that worked. In terms of the game itself, I thought we did all right. I was disappointed with the result. I actually think a draw would have been fairer. Um, I mean, Arsenal scored the goal, we didn't. So in theory, they deserve to win. Don't get me wrong. But um, first half, I thought we looked really good. I think Hayden was having a great game. Um, Joe Linton, for his first Premier League game, I thought it looked good. Uh, he looked a little bit isolated at times. I think we were very lucky with Rondon that you could literally slab him up top on his front and lob the ball into him, and he just won everything. Joe Linton won a lot, but when he was bringing the ball down, he didn't have the outlets available. Rondon pretty much had Perez stuck next to him like glue. Rondon, uh, Joe Linton was bringing it down, and Almiron's on the wing over there somewhere. So... That needs to be worked on. Uh, but I think Joel looked really good. Uh, Longstaff, I don't think quite had the game I was hoping for personally. But again, he is back um, for um, one of his first games uh, for a long time since his injury. Uh, and I'm still hoping he's going to have a very good season. But overall, first half an hour, the pressing we were doing. Arsenal, I, I know there's that new weird rule where you... You can pass it to a defender within your own 18-yard box. I don't really get it, but that's a new one. Um, we were on the really high press for that, uh, which was exciting. And if they made a mistake, we were on it. And we and that is probably one of the ways we were making chances in the first half was that high press, winning the ball. It was exciting. Coming to the end of the first half, we looked like we'd kind of lost our bite a little bit. It kind of slowed down. Um, I wouldn't say Arsenal were particularly creating a lot in the first half or um, either. So, uh, yeah, nil-nil, half-time, bit of a stalemate, a bit annoyed that we didn't maybe take a chance when we could have, but also happy that we kind of snuffed out anything that Arsenal had done. Moving into the second half, um, both teams looked <laughs> half asleep. Second half coming out, nothing was really going on. Um, one or two subs were kind of in the air to try and wake people up. Um, and then basically that was why we conceded a goal. A lazy pass from the centre-back out, out to uh, Willems, who would come on. He's standing there like a statue. He needs to press the ball, but he doesn't. The lad nips in, crosses it into Mbamnian, completely unmarked, and he sticks it in the net. <sighs> You know, all the hard work we went through in the first half for that was very disappointing. Um, that's the best way I can put it. We were on... I think we were trying to get the ball moving. We were trying to start pressing forward. Um, trying to get a win, basically. Um, Willems had come on. He was started in the middle, but then moved out to the left. And we were obviously trying to make some formation changes to try and get people working. Um, Mankio was being forced further up the wing to try and bring more of an attacking threat and under that push forward of us the one dodgy pass we've conceded a goal um, so that was very frustrating and then as the game went on unfortunately it didn't get better for us yes Arsenal didn't score another but I think Bruce was just trying to work something out to get a goal Richie moved into centre midfield when Richie moves into centre mid I don't think I saw him for the rest of the game, unfortunately. M Mankio was trying to look after the entire right wing. Uh, the lad is not quick enough to play right wing and right back. So that wasn't working. Um, and yeah, that's my three-minute three, three minute review of the game. So let me know what you thought of it down below. Some very good. There was some very positive things to come from that game. It was just disappointing that we weren't able to quite do it. And you know, it was Arsenal first game. You know, I was hoping for the draw. You know, I wasn't go I wasn't saying, oh, we can do this. I would have taken the draw before it started. So, yeah. Norwich on, uh, on Saturday this weekend. I mean, they got thumped off Liverpool. But now they're at home. And they are going to sh want to show their fans that they can do it in the Premier League against us. Uh, and we never do that great. Uh games with a long journey unfortunately which is a lot of the time for us because we're absolutely miles away from everyone else so yeah fingers crossed against Norwich if you all head down to the game uh, I hope you enjoy it all right but yeah that is it for me guys let me know down below what you think of the Charnley 
Rafa Benitez, you know, is that not old news now? Are we still talking about that? Um, let me know what you thought of the Arsenal game. Who had a, who had a good game? Who didn't? Will we be asked, uh, will we beat Norwich on Saturday? All right, guys, thank you all for watching. As always, drop a like on the video, and I'll catch you later. How could I forget, before I go, happy birthday, Alan Shearer. All right, thanks for watching. Catch you later.